Hi everyone, Donna here with Bookkeeping Made Simple, and today we're going to talk a little bit about KPIs. And before I really get di start diving into that, um, if you enjoy the show, if I'm saying anything that resonates with you, please share the show. Um, it just takes a second. This is pretty simple to do, um, and you could help a lot of your friends um, by just sharing the show and helping them to understand kind of what they need to do inside of their businesses. So I'm trying to get the word out. I'm trying to really talk about some of the key things that uh, I just feel like a lot of, um, you know, we hear about the motivational speakers, but they don't talk about what has to go on behind the scenes necessarily. So that's what I'm kind of diving into. I feel uh, not nearly as much fun. Is this about, uh, let's be honest, it's interesting as watching paint dry in a lot of ways but it's necessary to the operation of your business. So if you get anything out of it, please share the show. I really am anxious to help small business owners, fledgling business owners, um, people that just don't understand accounting to understand what they need to do behind the scenes, the day-to-day -day stuff um, that's going to help their business grow. Now, with that said, like a lot of small business owners, I get caught up in the day-to-day -day grind of, I've got to do the books. The, this certain work has to be done. Some work in the business can only be done by me. And so I get kind of caught up in that or in family obligations like a lot of women. Um, so my apologies. My my goal for the rest of the year is to be way more consistent on this and to put out a show every Thursday. Um, and then to start um, start making more progress towards that. So, but uh, with that, uh, and I really want to get very consistent with how the shows run and uh, really put out some really good information. So with that, um, KPIs. KPIs are key performance indicators. And really what that is, is when you take your goal and you boil it down to what do I have to do to achieve this goal? So for example, and I usually use weight loss because uh, that's an issue for me. Uh, like a lot of women, I've, I'm trying to lose weight, uh, and I feel kind of successful in that so far. Since February 6th, I've uh, gone from 175 to, uh, I've lost, what, 40 pounds. Um, so I feel, and I have been very athletic in the past. Uh, I currently am not, um, but that's yeah, getting ready to shift as well. Um, so I feel like I know how to lose weight. Most people do know how to lose weight. They may not want to do the work, but they know how to lose weight. And I've noticed that, and so I'm going to use that as an example, just because I feel like it's something everybody um, can relate to. So most people, oh, well, at least for me, I will try to go to the gym or I will start a diet. And I feel like if I have to eat healthy more than once, that is just cruel and unfair. You have to eat healthy all the time. Um, but a lot of us will think, um, well, I had a healthy meal, or I even ate healthy all week, I'm going to have a cheat day. And the cheat day will undo all of your work. Um, a lot like in business, we'll say we did really well for a little bit, but now I get to rest. And that is a problem. And that's where these KPIs come in. If I want to lose weight, um, then I have certain KPIs I have to meet. Did I have a calorie deficit for the day, every day. So if I know what my my basal metabolic rate is, how much calories I burn just breathing in and out, then I can say, well, okay, I need to, if I want to lose a pound a week, I need to reduce that by 3,000 calories a week. So that is um, about 500 calories a day. So I can eat what my basal metabolic rate is plus what I work out minus uh, the 500 calories extra or the 500 calories deficit that I need. So if I, uh, if I have a, a basal, you know, a base metabolic rate of let's say 1500 calories um, and I'm going to work out and I'm going to burn 500 calories, well, then I still have to eat 1500 calories. And I'm just doing this for easy math. This is not health advice. <laughs> Um, for anyone calls me and says, oh my gosh, eating a thousand calories a day is unhealthy. I know. <laughs> you know? Um, 
but that's just for easy hands. Um, in addition, in order to be really healthy, you also have to work out and you have to work out every day. Um, so you have to plan your activities, whether it's just walking, but you do have to, to do some sort of uh, working out. So you can take this and you can say, okay, I want to weigh 120 pounds as a, as a woman, I want to weigh 120 pounds and I want most of that to be muscle and I want this percentage of 25% of, you know, body fat, whatever it is. Um, and I want a waist measurement of this. You, you write out your goals, whatever they are. Um, but then you have to decide what do I have to do to achieve those goals? And that is where your KPIs come in. So if you're in sales and you have a 25% close rate, which is outstanding, then you automatically know that you have to have four serious prospects for every one sale you're going to make. You're gonna to talk to four people, three of them are gonna say no. You may have a 10% close rate. You're gonna to talk to 10 people and you'll get one sale. Um, so you have to figure out, okay, if I want to make five sales this week, then how many people do I need to talk to based on an average close rate? Let's say let's say you're just getting started, so you're gonna use an average close rate, or maybe even a little bit lower, okay? So I usually say, I actually do have a 25% close rate. Um, so I will say, if I have a 25% close rate, that means of the serious people that I'm gonna talk to, out of every four, one of them's gonna gonna work with me. But then I also take it uh, into account the tire kickers. So people are gonna be calling around just, hey, I just wanted to know how much it costs for your service. Um, the answer, by the way, is it depends. It depends on what your needs are. I will do a, uh, you know, if I can get as far as actually writing a proposal, then I know that about at least 25% of those people are going to close with me. Um, so that tells me that as the business owner who does all the sales, I have to have, to get 10 more clients, I have to talk to 40 people. I have to write 40 proposals. If I want to account for all the tire kickers, the people that aren't really serious, maybe people who are also in bookkeeping who want to know what the going rate is, um, then I have to talk to 80 people. So that then tells me, okay, if I want to talk to 40 people, how many people do I have to get ads in front of? Okay. I also know that retention depends on client communication. So if I want to retain a client, how many times a month do we need to communicate with them? That's also something I've defined. Um, and these are literally what your key performance indicators are. We have two kinds. There's lagging. So my weight, my bank balance, and the quality of my relationships depend on what I've done in the past. So my bank balance today depends on really what I've done three years ago and what I did last year. Um, my bank balance next year is gonna depend on what I'm doing now. It's a lagging indicator. KPIs, uh, if you do them right, can be leading indicators. So I can then decide if I want to make seven figures um, and I know what my close ratio is. I know what my average ticket sale is. And let's say, like I said, I'm just doing easy math. Don't take any of this spectacularly seriously. Uh, let's say I want to I want to gross a million dollars. Um, and let's say that my average client spends a thousand dollars a month with us. Well, that means that. Um, One million divided by 1,000. That means I need divided by 12. Uh, that means I need at least 83 clients over the course of the year. And they all have to spend about an average of $1,000 a month. Um, so, uh, by the way, we don't charge that much. Um, 
So then I can say, well, if I want 83 clients and I have a 25% close rate, um, then I need to talk to about 300 people over the course of a year. Well, that's about a person a day. So what can I do to talk to interested prospects at least one a day, maybe two a day, to bring in 83 new clients who are going to pay me $1,000 a month? Um, again, that's not my actual numbers, but I'm just working with round numbers right now. Um, now that gives me something, oh, I need to talk to one to two people a day. How can I do that? Well, I can attend networking events such as BNI um, or local events in my area, Chamber of Commerce. I, I can talk to more than one or two people a day, and some of those might be interested. I can put out online ads. I can create a sales funnel. I can, But now I have a definitive thing. I need to talk to one to two people a day who are serious about wanting bookkeeping services. And when I've done that, then I know that I'm going to be able to close a quarter of those. Um, okay. Those are your KPIs. For my staff, my KPIs are how many times did you communicate with the client in a positive manner? Okay. So I want them to reach out to the client once a month at a bare, bare, bare minimum, but most of them once a week. Reach out to them, let them know. <sighs> What we've done, I, I've actually told this to our staff, tell them I've done the work, your book should be up to date, call me with any questions, but the more times you communicate with the client, the more you're building that relationship. And this, by the way, is almost every industry. If you sell supplements, then you want to be in communication with your customers. So if you sell supplements, if they come in, get them to give you your, their phone number and their email address, send them a newsletter. Reach out to them, contact them, tell them this is what's changing in the nutrition industry. If you sell uh, windows, okay, let's say you work for Anderson Windows and that's your job, you sell windows and you're thinking, oh, this is a one-time purchase, I don't need to stay in touch with my clients. That's not true. Um, if you sell them a window, you might be able to sell them doors. If you sell them doors, then you might be able to find out who built their house and you might be able to network into um, a builder. If you sold them windows, well, those windows have to be kept clean. What if you sell a, a window cleaning service? Um, but the more you can talk to your customers, and by the way, it's not just the repeat purchases like it is with me. Um, we put people on a monthly program, but a window, I'm not going to want people to, I don't want to call my window person very often. But if that person's staying in contact with me, then what's going to happen is my neighbor's going to end up saying, ooh, I really need to put new windows on my house. And I'm going to reach in my back pocket and pull out my phone and say, I have your guy. This is my window guy. And he will be able to do a good job because he did a good job with me. And he's keeping me abreast of what's going on in the industry. Okay. Um, so those are the KPIs. So some of those that, um, you know, how many times do you send out a newsletter? That's a KPI. Um, how many times do you talk to interested people? How are your ads performing? Are, is your phone actually ringing? Um, what are you doing to go out and get these people in the door? So that when you boil it down, and it can be ridiculously simple. In fact, it's a, it's a common sales tactic is you take this this huge number, I mean, you've seen it, for the price of a cup of coffee a day, uh, you can have this. They don't tell you you have to buy the most expensive co cup of coffee, Starbucks, okay? Um, but yeah, for the price of a cup of coffee a day, we can do this. Um, and what it is, is it reduces it to the ridiculous. Of course I can afford a Starbucks coffee a day. So maybe instead of buying that coffee, I'm putting it towards this other thing. Um, it also shows, by the way, how little effort actually, I mean, it has to be sustained effort, but really, if you want to be successful, you have to have sustained effort over a long period of time. There's no such thing as an overnight success. By the way. Um, there are successes that compound. So if I have 100 clients and they're happy with me, they're going to be referring business to me. If I 
have those referrals and I'm continuing to work for new business, I'm going to end up with a lot of business. So those are what your KPIs are. Now, when it comes to finance, specifically accounting, um, your KPIs are going to be how much of your money did you get to keep? Okay, and I'm going to cover this a little bit more in a later video, but really wanted to cover these KPIs, these, these small incremental steps that are going to make a huge difference for your business. How many people did you talk to? Uh, for an accountant, how many tax returns did you do? Are you staying in touch with those people all year long? Uh, at this point, I'm starting to hear a lot from my clients saying, my tax person does my taxes and then I don't hear from them all year. Um, and I'm excited about that because that means I'm going to be able to charge those clients more money and do a little bit more work and they're going to feel like it's absolutely worth it. Okay, so that's what they are. Um, how many times do you communicate with your clients or your customers? How many times do you, you know, how many times does your phone ring? How many people do you need to talk to? How often, again, I go back to how often are you communicating? Um, McDonald's built an empire on the power of one simple question. And I learned it when I was 16, when I worked for McDonald's. Would you like fries with that? What can you upsell? What can you cross sell? Great, you want bookkeeping services? Would you like us to do your taxes too? You know, wonderful. Oh, you have these beautiful windows in your home. Would you like us to set up a monthly appointment to clean your window? Um, it really doesn't take a whole lot. It just takes a little bit of thinking outside the box to come up with different ways. And we have been using this to great success. Um, but again, you're going to reduce what you need to do to have a successful business almost down to the ridiculous. What do you need to do every day? What are your targets? Uh, it does take a lot of work to actually define what they are and to, um, to, to figure that out. And sometimes it takes some trial and error, but that's okay. You have to have a target. And then if you miss your target or you exceed them, you can recalibrate and continue to move forward. And that is what your key performance indicators are. Um, they're going to be different, by the way, for every industry. So my very first accounting job was working for Baptist Healthcare in Kentucky. And one of our KPIs then was the number of AR days. In other words, how much time, how many days elapsed between the initial bill, not when the patient received the care, but when we initially billed the insurance to having the bill paid in full. And we wanted that to be as short as possible. Now, that was kind of a group thing. Uh, that was a per hospital. But um, that was a KPI. What about your inventory turnover? That's a KPI. Uh, in other words, inventory turnover is how many times have you sold your inventory? So if I have $100 worth of product and I sell them all, that's one turnover. And now I have to go buy more. So what's your inventory turnover ratio? Um, what about your employee retention rate? Are you losing employees right and left and you're finding yourself having to train and retrain and retrain again? What key performance indicators are you following as an em employer to retain your talent? And by the way, that's a lot more than money. Um, one of the things that I do personally is I make sure to Think one, I thank my client, or I thank my employees frequently. I tell them and I ask for feedback. How I, you guys are, I mean, my employees are kind of my boss in some ways. Um, because if they don't like the way I'm managing the company, they can leave. And then I have to spend the money and time and effort to train someone else. And that costs money. Um, so I talk to them, you know, because I want to know how to be a better leader. What can I do different? How can I improve? And I take that to heart. And I and I actually, they, they've come back and said, oh, we don't like the way this is going. And I'll say, okay, let me, let me think on that. And we'll discuss it in our next staff meeting that we have every Monday. And then I will come back and say, you know what? You girls were right. 
We don't need to do that. It's, it's just not that important. We're going to do what you guys said because they're the ones that are on the ground actually doing the book. Um, so I want to make sure that um, I am make, helping. My, my job is not to um, be their boss. It is to help them be the best bookkeepers that they can be and then to basically bring them clients. Um, they are my employees, by the way. They are W-2 employees. I've done away with all 1099. Um, and I really want to know how to do better. Uh, what I don't want to hear is I don't want to hear you need to do. Uh, there's certain feedback that's just not open. Um, but most of it is. It, if it's about how I can do my job, how I can support them, I want to know. Um how many blog posts, I mean, it's, it's every little part of your business, whatever you focus on, that's what you're going to be able to grow. So I want really happy employees. So I switched them all from contractors to employees. And I also um, uh, started doing some more things to help them, you know, want to work for me, want to, you know, we're very flexible, for example. So there's going to be days when I'm the only one working uh, because I'm, you know, I, I asked for somebody to be here to answer the phone from nine to five, Monday to Friday, mountain time. Um, other than that, everything is asynchronous. And um, so if, if uh, one of my employees has, uh, and, and this has happened, you know, they need to be there for their spouse for a medical procedure, that's fine. Just let me know so I know what's going on. Um, and I don't understand the thou shalt be here. You know, you have to have, um, a certain amount of time on the clock or you have to have a certain amount of time with your butt in the seat. I, I don't do that because I want to be able to offer that flexibility because I want it for myself. Um, so anyway, those are what your KPIs are. It's not just your sales numbers. It's going to be a lot of other things that are going to go into your businesses. What's your ticket amount per customer? Uh, what's your lifetime value per customer? Um, what is your you know, how much can you afford to spend on ads? Um, what is your inventory turnover rate? What are your accounts receivable days looking like? How long is it taking you to pay your bills? Are you behind on your, these are all performance indicators. Some of them are lagging and some of them are leading. Leading indicators tell us that if you do these things, we already know that if you do these things and accomplish these goals and hit these targets, you're gonna have this success. And if you don't, you won't. Um, those are leading indicators. So if I eat salad, if I go on a diet, if I start working out, that is the leading indicator of what my weight and my body are going to look like six months from now or a year from now. If I'm sitting around eating Dunkin' Donuts, if I'm eating what, Krispy Kremes <laughs> um, all day long and I'm sitting at my desk and I've got a big thing of M&Ms that I'm chowing down on, that is also a leading indicator of what my body's going to look like six months to a year from now. Um, if I'm diligently posting on social media, which I need to get better at, and I'm diligently and consistently putting out a video, and I'm making my blog posts, and I'm running ads, uh, and I'm monitoring those ads for effectiveness, that is a leading indicator of what my business is going to look like a year from now two years from now, 10 years from now. So define what you want your business. It all starts with the big picture. Define what you want your business to look like and then start dialing in what you need to be tracking in order to make your business perform the way you want it to perform. And that is it for today. I'm looking forward to talking to you again real soon.